Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 through 8. A time for everything. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Let's look to God in prayer. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, this evening we come before your presence once again. We thank you for uh, bringing us together here over Zoom technology. And as we come here, Father, help us to understand the value of our time uh, that we may be able to organize, manage, and live out as planned. Father, we have just heard that you have anointed, you have set aside time, specific times for human endeavors and our activities. Help us so we become wise in order to invest our time wisely according to the, uh, the situations, according to what the time demands in our life. And we thank you for bringing each of us here with good health and energy and the ability to listen to your word and also the willingness to sacrifice ourselves for you. In all our discussion, in all our learning today, may you be glorified and protect us from the beginning till the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my dear brothers and sisters, it's been a great joy for me uh, to really um, take this opportunity. Once again, I greet you all in the name of CIEGF. Even though we are uh, small in number, yet uh, what we are going to learn is uh, very huge. So the name of the, the study that we're going to involve in tonight is called The Graduate and Holistic Balance. So The Graduate and Holistic Balance. During the course of the interaction, I would want you to speak up and share your thoughts and ideas and uh, anecdotes and whatever necessary. The Graduate and Holistic Balance. In one of the scenes of the movie, The Karate Kid, we see that old Japanese teacher explaining to the young protege what the sport requires most from its exponents. So he said, to succeed in a karate, you need to focus on the opponent and the immediate vicinity where always, while always maintaining your balance, no matter how complex the maneuver so you need to focus on your opponent and your immediate vicinity, the environment around you, while always maintaining your balance, no matter how complex the maneuver, the moves. Now this could well be a prescription for the lives of Christians, believers who need to focus on our various objectives and responsibilities. But always we need to also to maintain a harmonious, delicate, and difficult balance across each of them while doing so. So from the Karate Kid, something great lesson we learn is we need to balance our lives too. As a Christian, why is there a need for balance? A need for balance in our life. Now, areas of service, there are several responsibilities and areas of service that all active and committed graduates have to manage. Well, let's divide the, the areas that we need for balance. We are graduates, Brother Zote is a graduate, Sister Marilyn, Brother Isaac is also a graduate. Where do we need to balance our lives? Uh, our lives? Where do we need to invest our time in, right? First one, managing our relationships, right? Various relationships, that is the number one point. Within our families, within our fellowship, within our workplace and neighborhoods we need to manage the various relationships that we develop with our family members fellowships and workplace or colleagues number two the work we do right 
in our homes, in our offices, in our schools, in our colleges, in the companies that we work, our hospitals or other places that God has placed us in. So we have different professions. And in these various professions, we need to manage, we need to balance, right? We need to manage the balance. Number three, service in the church through exercise of our gifts are serving on committees, visiting students and graduates, encouraging, preaching, teaching, hospitality, and so on. So the third point is service in the church, right? And as we exercise our gifts through, through membership. And number four, serving society at large. Number four is serving society at large. Involvement in local resident association like YMA or some kind of NGO and caring for the environment and other forms of in engagement. So uh, these are the areas where we need to balance our lives. Number one, managing our various relationships, right, with our families, fellowship, workplace. Number two, in the work we do. Number three, in the church, uh, where we actively participate and, in, and engage. And number four, while we operate in our society through NGOs and other things, all right, and other areas. So it is very important. Now, prioritizing. Now, all these require considerable commitment of time, effort, energy, attention, and resources, physical resources, financial resources, emotional, and in order for us to be productive and effective. But then all these time, energy, and other resources are limited, and there's only so much that even the best amongst us can do, right? These days we are so busy that we, even if we want to give more time to these areas, we cannot, right? Time is so limited. The only way to remain simultaneously focused and yet balanced is to order our lives by prioritizing all that needs to be done and making wise choice. So, the only thing that is necessary is going to be prioritizing. Welcome, Sister Noel from PUC. We're already do, starting it. It's called the Graduate and Holistic Balance. Hope you stay focused with us. Right, Sister Noel, welcome. So now we said there are four areas where we need to set invest our time, but how can we do it? You see, we can't give priority to each one of the areas. And that's why important thing now is prioritizing, giving importance to where we need to give importance, all right? Focusing on what is most important from the point of view of God's standard and concern, right? Not from my concern, not from our family, not from our friends, not from the world's concern, but from God's concern, what is most important? We need to prioritize that, all right? So... A uh, simple framework for prioritizing the various facets of our lives set out in order of decreasing importance could be following. All right, so most important, second most, third. So let's list them out. Number one, relationship with God. All right, time spent in reflection, prayer, and study of the Word of God in order to know Him, His mind, and His concern for our world, our families, and for our individuals, and for us as individuals. All right. So the most important priority that we get, we got a gift for all these activities that vie for our attention is number one, relationship with God. All right, time spent in reflection prayer. Number two, family commitment. Time spent with my spouse or my children or my parents, siblings or extended family. So family is very, very, very important, all right? Number three, work that I do at home and the external workplace. So we gotta be accountable to the work, work that I do at home. What is my responsibility to work at home? Number three, number four, voluntary service in church, UESI, other Christian organizations and community service, All right? So number four is our voluntary service, that is in the church, in the UESI and other Christian organizations. Number five, investing in friendship and relationships within the church and outside number six personal development right leisure hobbies sports and various artistic pursuits see we just cannot uh, we're not robot robots right we need to recharge ourselves so personal development also sister sister marilyn what is your hobby or your leisure time pastime hobby uh it's mostly 
reading a good books and right. watching some movies <laughs> and right. spending time Thank with you. my family. Sister Noel, what is your hobby? Can you tell me, can you tell us your hobby, Sister Noel? No, oh, she's gone. And Brother Isaac, what is your hobby? Oh, uh, yes, uh, playing basketball and reading books as well, yes. All right, that is very good, yes. Uh, Brother Zote, what is your hobby? Uh, these days, playing football. Yes, very good. Sister and Noel. reading books also. Wow. So all of these, right? It's also important. So let's list the order. First, relationship with God should take priority. Number two, family commitments. Number three, the work that we do at home or external workplace, you know, our calling or earthly vocation. Number four, voluntary service, right? Number five, investing in friendships and relationships, right? Number six, personal development. All of these are seriously important, and that's the order of precedence. All right. I don't know whether you agree that or not, but we can talk about that later also. So each of these has a definite place in our lives and management. All right. Uh, management is going to be really important. Right. Now, um, a management tool common, uh, commonly used both consciously or otherwise is called the VED framework, VED, the V capital, E capital D. So what is this VED? All right. So you have to classify these, our activities. Number one, a V is vital, E is essential, and D is desirable, right? We need, we need to make sure that we find the time and resources for what are vital, vital is really important, and try to ensure that we do not sacrifice too much of what are essential. And in doing so, being willing to sacrifice those that are listed as desirable, right? Oh, we need to know vital is important, essential is also important, and desirable is also important, but the order of importance, it may fall, it may be different, all right? So now, in order to find a balance, developing a holy balance involves making careful choices so that we find time for all aspects that are vital and essential but at the same time not ignoring or totally casting away those that are desirable right and in doing so we may sometimes need to sacrifice the perfect for the excellent all right so i hope the ved framework is uh is something that is important also now Work-life balance. Let's take a look at work-life balance. Professional, right? Now, a study of the first uh, two chapters of the Bible would clearly show that work is fundamentally uh, is fundamental to God's created order. Genesis one and two, or even if especially Genesis two two, God said the human beings to work in a beautiful world he had created, to discover its mysteries, bring order to wildness, harness its energies, sustainably exploit its resources and make it even more beautiful. So work is good, right? Because God ordained it to be so. This is the creation mandate, God says. And he, he looked at creation and he says, good, it's beautiful and he was satisfied, right? Now, this would include all realms of work as understand as we understand today as agriculture, industry, trade and commerce, healthcare, education, service, government, protecting the environment, community work, housework. In a sense, all that we do for human society to take care of the earth, right? So work is good, it is not bad, right? In fact, there is something called the Protestant ethics, right? Back way back from the time of Martin Luther, there is something called Protestant ethics. Uh, it, it's meant, it's basically means that Protestants work very hard because they believe that working hard and being honest in our earthly vocation is a calling from God. No, Protestants, Christians are supposed to work very hard. That was the teaching of the early church fathers, all right, even in their secular job. Now, principles for work, right? The first principle, you know, there are two principles for work. The first is that work has to be done responsibly and ethically. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Responsibly and ethically. While taking care of God's creation and enjoying the fruit of their labor, there was a tree from which uh, fruit could not be plucked by the first couple. That was the 
only rule to be upheld, one rule that could not be broken. The challenge for Christian is therefore to carry this principle to their modern workplace today, working ethically and responsibly reflecting godly character in all that we do. God says, you don't do this, you don't pluck. So there is some prohibition, right? The second principle is of rest, right? God rested on the seventh day and has instituted a principle to be followed by his creation. When the nation of Israel was created, God thought this principle important enough to be part of his immortal, timeless moral standard for Israel and the world. Rest, not just for individual, but also for its property, land and livestock and employees, servants and slaves. The time of rest was not meant to be foolishly, self-centeredly enjoyed, but rather as a time for focusing on renewing one's relationship with God. This is worthwhile principle for us to remember, right? In this frantically paced modern world, when we look for others and in turn employ others to work for us, the need for adequate rest is important. All right, now, so that's the principles of work. The principles of work is, work has to be done first, responsibly and ethically. Number two, there is a time for rest, All right? Now, excellence at work. The standard that God sets for our work is excellence. In the context of work, we are told whatever we do, I think uh, Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, do at it with all your heart as for the Lord and not for man. Whatever you do, we are told to work wholeheartedly, Ephesians 6.7. As much as we pray, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, uh, or to study the Bible diligently. Acts 17, 11. In doing so, we would need to remember that at work, God is our boss. We really report to him despite having our earthly boss, bosses, right? Sister Marilyn is working now in a psychiatric department, a hospital, and she does not do her work properly, even though she reports to the medical superintendent there. Ultimately, she needs to realize that she, what work that she is doing doing as if for the Lord. Same case, uh, Brother Zoram, uh, Brother Zorimba, uh, uh, right, uh, Brother Zote. Brother Zote is actually working right now in, uh, in, in an institution too, right? We would therefore need to excel not only in the spiritual disciplines, but also in our work. See, if I don't show up for work properly, and if I don't do what my bosses are expected if i don't really engage the students so i also am not a, a worthy teacher and i'm not being honest right and that is not good as christians whatever you do do at it with all your heart for the lord and not for men that's what the bible says we are to work hard we are not to uh, really fool around and be lethargic right again in his writing to the church at corinth paul had to convey but just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, earnestness, and for your love, so that you excel in this grace of giving. Excellence, he clearly implied, is the standard for all facets of our life in Christ. Right. Wow. What a great word. Excellence. We are to excel. Now, I want to say something. With regard to this, Sister Marilyn has received an award very recently because she worked very well in the district of Siha. In fact, the town of Siha very recently during the pandemic, the raging and all that, uh, she is out in the streets and telling people to wear masks and she's enforcing the law. And uh, people really recognize that the bosses also recognize it. And she received an award for such a, a really great job that she did for the for the government right and that is excellence and that is what we need to strive for right now working in a globalized context as a consequence of uh, economic liberation and integration of the indian economy with the global economy the markets for products and services have expanded the demands and aspirations of the growing population competition from other companies and the consequent pressure for the economy to grow at the level over 8% per year, requiring massive investment in physical and social infrastructure. These would place huge demands on the workforce to sustainably deliver products and services of the highest quality in a cost-effective manner in the shortest possible time frame. As a consequence, many professionals these days spend 14, uh, I think, um, 
14 to 16 hours each day at the workplace for 56 days of the week and sometimes even over the weekends. So demanding, especially if you go to the metro places. Admittedly, there is monetary compensation for all these levels of income in India uh, have grown exponentially over the last decade. And there's so many uh, middle income, like middle class income uh, uh, families now. They can afford to buy uh, luxuries. However, to, uh, there comes with it the pull of consumerism and materialism, for it is possible to work to occupy the center stage living time for little else in one's life. We work so hard. Work can then become an addiction, and workaholism is a way of life. Uh, but just two days ago, I spoke, I spoke to one friend of mine. He called me up from Imphal. He's been there to Singapore and Japan for a number of years. He's my old classmate. He called me up. We talked. I said, why did you quit your job in Japan? Must have paid really huge. And he said, oh, wow. I don't, even, I don't have time in Japan for my wife even. We're too late by the time we get back home and we got up early. My wife, even though we stayed in the same house, we hardly see each other. At our, uh, so we don't want. They, they say work is worship. Is it? And I said, whoa, yeah. That's not surprising because I've heard from statistics that in Japan, the number of su num uh, you know, the suicide rate, they held a suicide rate for the first highest suicide rate in the world. And you say, yeah, that's true, because they work so hard, and uh, there's a lot of pressure. Now, is that good? See, workaholism is a way of life, living little time for God. And it's it's also slowly creeping into India now, and here in Mizoram also, especially in Aizol. Little time for God, for family, for church, for community, for rest, for recreation and relaxation. As a consequence, sleep disorders, acidity, and ulcers. Hypertension and obesity emerge as problems very early in life. Coupled with the problems at work, petty jealousies, backbiting, slander, sense of feeling cheated when rewards do not appear adequate. This could result in a pattern of changing jobs, losing jobs, or getting burned out and not wanting to work at all. All right, so there's a whole lot of problems. So work out, working out. How do we work out the balance for a Christian working at these times? Working is a profession. It is important to remember that work is not everything. All right. In Japan, they say, as I said, work is worship. But we have to remember work is not everything. There is a need to balance work with life. Work fitting in with the rest of life and not the other way around. Right. There is a need to choose to live life in a quietly effective manner. First Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12 rather than in fleshly, crass, loud, and intrusive way of doing things. If we, not, if we do not find the right balance, other areas like personal devotion, family, ministry, community service, and even our health will suffer, right? We would therefore need to prioritize our activities in order to live um, our lives to reflect a sense of balance. Now, there is no easy answer to how one can integrate faith with work in these challenging times. In the Bible, examples of Joseph and Daniel stand out as people who seem to manage this balance successfully, right? Can you imagine the Prime Minister's work of Joseph? It's going to be very difficult, right? A lot of work, a lot of challenges. The same case with Daniel. He's a statesman, you know, a lot of files to really you know, glance and pour over. They spent time with God, nevertheless. They stood for godly principles in these displayed godly character and were bold in their faith no matter how high the cost or how serious the consequences well joseph's career graph took an upward turn after his prison sentence daniel seems to have had a checkered career with ups and downs despite his very early successes there were periods of popularity and relatively obscurity for daniel a one thing remained constant for daniel what is that relationship with God for which he found time in the middle of his busy working day, right? Always finding time. Now we have uh, this principal in our, in our college. He's a Muslim, right? A very busy man and there's a lot of work to be done. But what I admire the most about him is that he always managed to find time with his God, Allah, right? When his time for prayer comes, he closes his door and then he lets nobody in and he would spread that carpet or the mat 
and then he would pray in the inside the office right he's a muslim he managed to find time despite his busy schedule so now let's look at our lifestyle choices the pull of materialism so what do we mean by materialism brother isaac any definition you're from commerce background uh yes materialism would be uh seeking for things uh material things like possessions and wealth and right. riches these things yes thank you brother brother zotea what do you think about consumerism we have heard a lot about consumerism what would be your definition basically very close with materialism i think yeah i think it refers to buying or acquiring uh, what uh, materials whatever materials we want or we desire or we need okay thank you brother isaac is from economics background right human want is unlimited i think that's what we study in our ba economics human want is unlimited right so now many evangelical Christians in our present age succumb quite easily to the seductive message when we receive uh, myriad newspapers and see advertisement hoardings or watch television or talk to our colleagues or friends, right? We readily embrace a lifestyle promoted by sellers of products and services, all right? Often lifestyles of the rich and famous in our society. You know, there was a catchphrase like Bond with the Brace, uh, Bond with the Best by Reed and Taylor's Premium, right? Amitabh Bachchan, all these, you know, superstars, they were flaunting all these fashion. And then we all immediately want to have those things. Other related attitudes are commerce communicated through advertisements. For instance, you and your family deserve the best, right? So change to a positive outlook to luxury to share presence with all the new wagon r because the times they are changing right the advertisements they are so sly they are so cunning they they slowly insinuate into our mind they try to sow a seed that we are not to be satisfied with what we have right that's the goal of advertisement give your children the competitive edge with manorama knowledge adventure cd rom because smart information makes smart kids right so there are a range of other lucratives, right? These things, I, I don't have time to go into all these because they have a message. Their message is to sell products to us, right? Now, the pull of materialism is so high, right? We're living in a material world, materialistic world. So consequent life choices. In many urban Christian weddings these days, we see process of very elaborate detail planning also for their weddings like elaborate jewelry accessories makeups and food to be eaten speeches photographs video oh it's too much i got married very recently and i understand when he mentioned all this sister marilyn will also get married but the zodama also will get married one day you will understand right there are so many things i try to say cut it down cut it down cut it down all the time and i told straight to my wife see we're not going to go out for shooting all right it costs a lot of money i don't need that if we got one photo shot in the church with the pastor that is fine with me don't go for the extra that's what i told my wife and uh, of course her parents her family others they really wanted us to go out for a shooting this and then i said no it's a waste of money it's a waste of time it's more important is shoot it in the church with the pastor you got one photo shot that's fine our love is going to be more important so I don't want to all the elaborate. I don't even want to say, okay, this is coronavirus and it's dangerous. Plus, I don't want extravagantly. So no feast also. We spend only little food and just little snack. All right. So we try to cut down on many things. All right. But this is not so with our modern world now. It's so extravagant. And this is the gown to be worn by the bride for the wedding ceremony with 25,000. All this. I don't want to go into all this. He would know all right now this is the world in which we are living in in mizoram also has become so materialistic so consumed ma consumed with the consumerism in all of this there is as a result of imbibing these self-centered attitudes our homes families lifestyle joints vacations relationships and are often little different from the rest of the world 
we need to seriously reflect on these issues since these attitudes are what we would consciously and unconsciously transmit to our EU students. So there, the most important thing now is so we are graduates. If we are so much into consumerism and materialism, and if we do things extravagantly, the EU kids, they are going to look at us. We're going to unconsciously transmit these things to our EUs, which we don't want, right? We don't want them to be extravagant. We always say simple living, right? Simple living, high thinking. That's what we always want to transmit to our EU students or our children in our committee. All right, since action springs up, spring up from convictions, it will be useful to consider where we are, our focus truly ought to be. Welcome, Brother Emmanuel Rotsanga. Hello, brother. We're already in the middle of doing it. Brother Emmanuel, can you hear us? Uh, yes, brother. Great to see you, Brother Emmanuel. Continue to stick with us. We are doing the graduate and holistic balance. All right. So now let's go on. The Apostle Paul said to the church in Colossians, uh, since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Do not think only about things down here. Colossians 3.12, right? Our mind should be focused on the world. As I said, the priority in the first uh, few minutes, I said relationship with God is most important. Set your mind on things above, right? And therefore, we should be heavenly minded, right? We need to reflect truly God and his concerns while we live on earth. Our life should spend addressing these concerns rather than the mirror, the mirroring the prevalent and popular attitudes of our day, right? What are God's concerns now? All right. Jesus manifesto or the Nazareth manifesto. What is God's concern now? We have to be concerned about what God's concerning, right? What is the Nazareth Manifesto, right? There is a election just recently also, MNF with SEDP in Congress, with NLUP and all the ZNP with all kinds of things going on. They want to sell. But Nazareth Manifesto, in what Jesus declared, has, he, has, he said, He appointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the downtrodden will be freed from their oppression. That is the Nazareth Manifesto. The prophet Micah, uh, Micah advised the nation of Israel, The Lord has already told you what is good, and this is what he requires, to do right, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God, Micah 6, 8. Or as conveyed through the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah first. Uh, first Isaiah 17 says, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the orphan, fight for the rights of the widows. All right. These are the concerns, right? To preach the gospel and liberate people from the bondage of sin. That should be where our minds should be focused on, not our homes, family, career, hobbies, and other things alone. All right. And our riches and a glamour and entertainment. All right. So earning, let's go to the next section. See, we're almost done. I hope you're not bored. Now, needs and wants. Again, as we look to the next area about earning, saving, and giving, let's, let's look at uh, a little bit about needs and wants, right? Okay. My brother Isaac, uh, economics background, he's a topper of economics. Uh, last result, well, let me call him. Brother Isaac. Are you still there? Yes, brother. Yes, but We're very proud yes, of brother. him because he's a topper of economics under MZU. So according to economics, how do you describe, differentiate between the needs and wants? Uh, how do you learn these things in the BA? Please tell us needs, needs and wants. How can you differentiate in economics? Oh, yes. Uh, needs are the things which are essential, which are really important to us. But ones are uh, not necessarily what we need. They may be just mere ones. Like uh, we can live without it, uh, even if we don't have. Uh, that will be the simple definition. Yes, thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, the, we often say human wants is unlimited. Is that correct? Yes, yes, that's what we learned. <laughs> yeah, human wants is unlimited. See. We are so greedy, right? And thank you so much for explaining, Brother Isaac. You are 
worthy to be a topper of economics under MJU. Now, buying a house and furnishing it comfortably is a reasonable need for which we would all, uh, like, which we would all inevitably be required to spend resources, our resources on, right? But what kind of house and furniture would we buy? And that's a different thing, right? So we need a house, absolutely. And that's our need, right? We cannot live in, uh, in a hut anymore these days. But what kind of house, what kind of furnishing do we want all foreign made from Italy, from Germany, all this? Is it necessary, right? Right, but what kind of house? One thing, uh, one that is within our means or one that would make us bond slaves for a very, very long time in order to pay back large silver sliver of debts to banks or housing companies. So in Haggai 1, 3, and 4, the Lord had to say this to the exile. He says, is it time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? Right. We would constantly need to distinguish between a legitimate need and a frivolous want. There's a continual tension between actively practicing the discipline of simplicity and the natural propensity to acquire more and more of the best wares and offer. Our children should see us thoughtfully reflecting over these decisions by applying the simplicity test. If the need is a private transport system for for work to home, how does one fulfill? Would you buy scooter, electric, or a secondhand car, or a small car, or a luxury car? See, I really like Sister Marilyn because she's a young and energetic and beautiful and sought after lady for many graduates, but she does not want to buy, she can afford a nice luxurious car, the most beautiful and all that, but she's buying only a scooter, yellow scooter. Of course, it's very strong because it has to be strong to take Sister Marilyn. She's going to different places as a, a psychiatrist, right? And a clinical psychologist, right? She doesn't care. And that's why I like her because it's simplicity like that, right? One of the reasons before I got married, I liked my wife so much was because she was very simple. She had this scooter like Sister Marilyn, and our scooter was very rugged. It's shaking so heavily. Sometimes our hands would, no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> she didn't have it repaired for a long time. I said, see, you, you, your hands, it's all going to be destroyed, your end nerves. So you got to have it. So they, we had to have it in the workshop to repair, right? Very simple. And it's also not a beautiful scooter, but it takes from point A to point B, and then she's satisfied. The EU students or children or friends need to see how we meet or meet this need or indulge in our want in big and small things and continuously. We cannot ignore Jesus' warning in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where mud and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up instead treasures in heaven where mud and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also matthew 6 19 through 21. the main issue here is where is my treasure what is that what is it that i value the most to what do i give most preeminence in my life right it says no one can serve two masters all right so it's very important that we use and we you live a life of simplicity okay now i i there are so many things to to talk about and all these i want to just rush forward in order to save time now open homes let's let's go to another area of open home all right you need new esi we have something called open home uh, we are bound to open open homes someday brother Zotia will also have his separate home with his wife and it's got to be open home same case with sister Marilyn brother Isaac and brother Emmanuel also right in an age where fences are getting taller houses are protected more securely than ever before and guarding one's privacy is an obsession and often the subject matter of many a lawsuit the concept of an open home may stand out as an anachronism, means it may not be popular. Right now, we are having a problem here in Poland, right? 
Poland is trying to defend its border, right? Brother Zote against, uh, I think, border with Belarus. There were um, hundreds, thousands of refugees trying to pour into Europe. And if you look at the United States, right, Donald Trump has vowed to build the wall, the border, right? Now, a lot of Texas um, people are going in through the Arizona border or Mexico. Yeah. And here in Mizoram also, right? Border crisis, penetration, uh, migration is a problem. And uh, in this day and age, our main idea is to be, to fence ourselves around, prop up a wall against other intruders. We don't want people to come into our lives and uh, destroy our culture, our values, our comfort, our, they don't want, no, we don't want to, them to eat up things, right? This is the world. But UESI, we have open homes. <laughs> what does it mean by open home? Yeah, let's talk about that once again. Sister Marilyn, what is an open home? According to you? Okay, thank you, brother. I think I, according to me, an open home is a, a place where an, be it an EU student or an EGF member coming from, you know, other place uh, where they can stay comfortably, comfortably in the sense where they can feel at home and stay and, you know, share whatever I, we had, you know, and sleep in wherever <laughs> a space is available. You know, not a luxurious uh, place, but uh, it's a, you know, a place where they can feel at home and they can, at the same time, uh, you know, they can um, uh, see and learn about, uh, you know, uh, Jesus and um, the place where they can uh, share uh, their, um, whatever is in their mind, which troubles them, you know, uh, wh where they can ventilate themselves. And, and most of the time, uh, myself, uh, what I experience in an open home is that they usually, you know, serve, uh, especially for students, it's a wonderful that they serve a uh, refreshment and all, you know, it's, it's very comforting. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, talking about uh, uh, the life of Jesus while uh, having a wonderful refreshment, especially as a student, which we hardly had, uh, you know, uh, an experience of. So. I, that is what I feel like uh, open home is. Thank you very much, sister. Yes, that is very true. And for thanks for the elaboration. Yes. See, um, the concept of open home may not be popular now because as we said earlier, the world, countries, homes and houses and families, we want to fend off ourselves from others. We don't want intruders. We don't want people, right, to enter our lives. We want our privacy. But in UESI, we have a concept of open home, and Sister Marilyn rightly demonstrated that. So most of the EGM members, to most of us, this has been the unique strength, perhaps the mainstay of UESI ministry. It is sacrificing our comfort, our home, our room, our life, inviting them to come into our places, right? That is the concept of open home. It's radically different from what the world is, uh, you know, wanting to do these days, right? We don't want to fend ourselves. We want kids, you kids, to come into our lives. In fact, we invite them to share with us the food so that we can See, Brother Emmanuel is from Lungle. He's a, uh, he's a chaplain and he knows so well. I think students these days, they need to be counseled, right? Rather than him preaching in the pulpit many times with the thumping down, it may be more effective for Brother Emmanuel to bring the students in his room, in his house, sit down with them, have a cup of tea, jolly time, very casual setting and talk with them. That may be more effective, right? So that is what we do here, and that's what we need, open home, right? Uh, while in the past there have been instances of open home being detrimental to the uh, of relationships in the family between spouse with children, uh, increasingly in our current working context, the availability of these resources diminishing, 
So there's clearly need for setting careful balance the way we practice hospitality. Open homes could be houses, flats, or PG accommodation or hostels, or place, places where graduates live. Sometimes these places take on a nature of a hotel or even waiting rooms or hospitals, counseling centers, matchmaking tents, shelters, not just place to let down and let your hair down and be cared for and encouraged depending upon the needs of the students. It is also a place where students often come for Bible studies, informal setting for three years. Okay, now, see, right now I'm building a house with uh, my family in Vanglui. We're living here momentarily in Kadla Sal. So we got uh, two flats now uh, up and coming. I, I made it specifically that, okay, the on the second floor, my wife and I would leave, and we'll leave a large room without uh, any wall, you know, walls also, and there'll be another guest room. So this will be for, you know, uh, chatting and like an open house where students would come. We'll also have fireplace there. So I have designed it in that way. So when it's finally finished, it's going to be really beautiful, I hope, right? See, I had this in mind because I'm so uh, soaked in the USI ministry, and I want my house, my place, part of my a uh, you know facility to be used by students so we can invite students and chat with them counsel them pray with them pray for them have fellowship sing together bible study i mean i can envision envision almost five years from now or 10 years from now i'm so excited to finish this house that we are building right now All right so i guess that should be the our mindset too All right to so the advantage of an informal setting but sharing the gospel cannot be overemphasized. This is where students can be mentored, uh, lifelong relationships can be forged, and models for marriage and family life and personal evangelism, and all of these can be demonstrated. All right. And of course, it's going to be challenging because they're going to intrude into our privacy. Our food stock is going to be depleted because students are ravenous eaters, right? <laughs> and uh, we'll also not have time to rest sometimes probably. And uh, it's going to be difficult, if, especially if our personality is not that one of one, not that of outgoing type. If we are introvert, then we may have problems, but see. Personal evangelism is something so important in the USI ministry. And that's why our open homes can be a good setting. And we need to uh, launch forward and try to do this, right? Even if we haven't tried, okay? Now, there is another area that I would like to talk about as we discuss the graduate and holistic balance. This is the second last area, voluntary service. Let's talk about that. There is a huge demand on the uh, on some of our graduates, particularly in places where Christians are small, as in the north or west or east India. All right, huge demand. So whether in church, UESI, or other uh, Christian volunteer service organizations, the same graduates are expected to provide leadership to servant committees, right, and give their time and resources. It's so true, right? In Lungle, I think uh, Brother Emmanuel is also going to be very, very busy because. They know him, they pick him out. He's a, he's a resourceful man, he's a committed Christian and many Lungle Christian young boys and girls, they are not into this. So the same person will be used for this ministry, that ministry, same case with Sister Marilyn, with Brother Zotea also, right? And uh, the pre Lungle president, Brother <laughs> Trinmone is also one busy man, I can tell you. <laughs> Always having schedules and programs and, right? So the increasing complexity of the church and other structures need substantial commitments in terms of time, energy, and effort. As a result of our simultaneous involvement in so many organizations and activities, we may actually end up being ineffective in all of them, right? Could that be true, Sister Marilyn? Because of so many things, it is so easy that we could not finish each of the jobs, right? Sometimes the involvement of the family is skewed with one spouse being over-involved. As a result, the oneness that is otherwise expected in marriage and family is conspicuous by its absence, right? So sometimes only one person in the family is working all the time, the other one goes around. Of course, we say that they are supporting each other, which is good, no problem at all. But, you know, family also is a teamwork. Last night, my wife had a Bible study session with uh, Repent students. And I said, okay, I can help you. How? 
I will sing one song for you to, to meditate the, during the course of the message. And that somehow I want to work as a team, you know, husband and wife. Right. And I did that. And praise the Lord. It gave me energy to do that. So in the first century church, it would appear that involvement in the ministry was by families, with spouses, with siblings, with parents, children, working hand in hand with other families in building the church. This is found in Romans 16. In particular, the examples of Aquila and Priscilla and Philemon and Aphia and uh, Chippus find special, they, these people find special mention in the way they serve together as a family. So there's a, clearly a need to share responsibilities and increasingly trust others with leadership roles. All right. Since each of us is gifted by the Holy Spirit, we would find that all members of our immediate family and the larger body of graduates have something to contribute. We need to consciously seek out the involvement of all other members across a wide spectrum of responsibilities so that the burden is more uniformly shared and does not result in unnecessary demands being made on just a few. All right. Since the result of this would be seen only in the long term, we may need to sacrifice short-term efficiencies for long-term effectiveness and patiently allow people to make mistakes and learn from them. Okay. Now here is uh, basically the summing up of what we just said. Voluntary service. There is a great demand for young Christians to be involved in ministries. And the same people are used over and over again. But we need to make sure that others are also involved and we need to know where to draw back and where to push harder and where, when to let others in and take the reins and be at the spotlight, right? See, I cannot be, even though I am the president right now, I cannot be in charge of all the subcommittees. Let others do the job. Let others take the reins, right? Let, let others also be, you know, given a chance, right? And pray for them, encourage them, nurture them, give them advice, right? And that's what we need to do, right? Now, other matters. This is the last segment of our study. Other matters. Well, I uh, in this paper, we have, uh, you know, so many things can be discussed. Uh, uh, there is a couple of reflections that we need to look. In EWESI, number one, in EWESI, we have not emphasized enough the need to maintain close friendship outside of family of believers, right? These may be our classmates from schools or college people, neighborhood or colleagues from office or others we may easily relate to. We are often comfortable in our little evangelical cocoons and so limit our ability to bring changes and transformation. Evangelism, we need to realize that evangelism is not meant to be a guerrilla skirmishes into enemy territory. It's all about being sold and light through honest and intense engagement. We need to teach this to students and graduates and to perhaps reorient this attitude in this regard, okay? In our effort and zeal to defend and safeguard our pristine or perceived um, uh, harmony, we are not used to branching out, going out and having fellowship with other brothers and sisters and other ministries. And this might be, we need to rethink this attitude also. We need to be brave, bold, and reach out to them. Not just this, as we say, little evangelical cocoon, but to other areas also where we need to be salt and light. Okay? This is something we need to realize. And I think uh, in Saiha also, so we have this Siha EGF for a couple of years now, three years. It's very difficult, and we also need wisdom and courage to reach out to others and to invite, right? It's always been our prayer. Uh, Sister Marilyn has been working very hard to bring others also, but somehow it's a little difficult. We cannot uh, break through into other areas to other people, and we need to do this. Number two, this is the last point. We have not equally emphasized enough to need the equally. Uh, you know, emphasize enough the need to redeem the culture of our times. For this, we need to develop our natural gifts and talents, our artistic and athletic abilities in art, music, drama, sports, and games, among other things. Right. 
It's so true. We need to restrict our music to gospel songs, our dramatic abilities to skits in church and so on. These areas too need much attention and perhaps a certain amount of reorientation and training. How we can go and invade the culture, right? We clearly need to make our presence felt in the art and culture of our times in the media, you know, social media explosion in order to make a redeeming and transformational impact. It is so true. A couple of years ago, we had this USI album called Living God, and we put a lot of songs. I'm very interested in music, <laughs> and I write uh, songs, and there were five of my songs there also, and Brother Zawa also, and from other uh, Northeast. So that was the thing. I often think that it's high time that we need to make the second album, the USI album, to reach into the modern culture, right? I believe that God has given the USI ministry with talents and resources, right? But we need to reach and break through into these uh, culture now, which is changing, which is crying out for the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So that is, that. those are the two concerns. Uh, and are the matters where we need to work very hard and think and reorient ourselves to okay and uh oh, so we'll discuss from the little presentation that is my presentation from what i've given given here and i want you all to contribute to areas where you need to uh say something more okay yes well let me ask one question to brother emmanuel uh since uh, he's from lungle and uh, brother emmanuel uh what do you think about the praise and worship scene in in Mizoram these days? Do you think that this the praise and worship is something that it, God is really using among the young people, or um, is it something that uh, is not really productive? Or what do you feel? Yes. Yes. Uh, the praise and worship. I think it's. Uh, the style and the the worship style is different in different parts of the places. Uh, for us, uh, like Hatim, we do it in on in Sunday afternoon, and I think it's very productive and effective sometimes. And I could really sing from my heart sometimes when we have this praise and worship. And it's the time they miss the most, even the students, because they gain so many things and uh, there are spirit is lifted up when we have this uh, praise and worship. But uh, these days, yes, uh, I think even in ISOL, we see in social media and they have this praise and worship. And if it is uh, the best, if it is their best way, to sing praises to God and uh, if they um, benefit spiritually, I think it's okay. Uh, whatever the style may be, whatever the music, whatever the song we sing, if we really can uh, have a very great time with God, let's say, uh, I think that is uh, the best, and I think it's uh, the present worship in Mizoram. I think it's good uh, how we do these days, even these days. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Emmanuel. Yes, you yourself are also a great worship leader in Haitim Lungle. We have a great worship leader team that's invading culture and transforming the lives of students this is really awesome so from the presentation is there any point that you would like to elaborate or discuss further or do you agree or not agree with the list of uh, priorities that i also set forth in the beginning <laughs> so let's discuss a few more mr marilyn brother isaac feel free Or if we say that the graduate needs a holistic balance, the graduate, when we say about the graduate, we talk about the young Christians, especially those leaders, the church, involved in the church. What is the main problem for us 
right? What is the main problem us, for us uh, that hinders us to make a holistic balance in our life? Is it that we are spending too much time at night on television and things or really like a real work, other pressures or just a Marilyn? Actually, it's a very interesting uh, presentation that we had today. Um, I'm very happy uh, that, you know, <laughs> uh, even in the last uh, minute uh, request, uh, Brother Mark could come up with such a, a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much for that. And I think uh, we actually need this kind of uh, presentation, uh, more of this kind of presentation in UESI ministry also as a graduate or even as a, a EU member also. See, uh, there is a saying in Mizoram uh, that uh, we could not have, uh, you know, a civil service, uh, um, you know, a successful civil service uh, candidates because we have uh, so much of involvement uh, in different, uh, you know, uh, organization, be it in the church, be it uh, NGOs or, you know, uh, so many social activities that we had that hamper Actually, you know, even our career, even our, uh, you know, the quality of our involvement uh, as a Christian. So it, that is what even I believe. And, you know, we need, I think we need to, uh, even though uh, we are, you see, we cannot be saying that we cannot be a member of uh, YMA MTP, or we cannot say that we, uh, like, you know, we cannot be a member of, uh, you know, some uh, church or uh, church fellowship, something like that. But I think uh, we need to prioritize where we want to really, uh, you know, impact, where, where we really want to have, uh, you know, uh, an impact in the lives of the people uh, that uh, we are serving with. So I believe that, see, I what I want to give an example about uh, myself is that I am actually, I'm a, uh, you know, I'm a, a very active church member, as you say, and a very uh, active um, KTP member, even in my church. But I'm staying in Siaha and I don't want to involve much in, you know, other church activities and societies, uh, you know, so another social organization. Because, see, if I do that, I will not be able to concentrate much in UESI uh, ministry with the workload that we have and you know, I'm staying with my uh, brother's family and, you know, I have to contribute even in the family also. I could not just, you know, come and go and do whatever I want since I'm staying with them. So if I don't, uh, you know, choose or prioritize uh, the, uh, the, you know, the activities that I, what, uh, I want to involve in, then, uh, you know, I, I will be everywhere and nowhere, something like that. So... Uh, because of that, I think it's very important that uh, we prioritize, even though we are a member, I am a member of MTP, MSO, you know, I'm a member of church, a KTP, uh, anywhere. I, I, I am a member of all the, you know, organizations that we have as a community. But at the same time, we have to choose uh, where we want to involve and where we really want to have an impact. So that is what I'm, that is what I, uh, you know, I learned from today's uh, presentations and uh, that is what I really believe that we need as a society and as a graduates. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much, Sister Marilyn. I want to ask one more question to brother Emmanuel. I want to know his perspective. As we studied, uh, you know, that part, part where we studied life choices and we said uh, that, you know, wedding, the wedding day and all the marriage planning, it's become so expensive all across India. Now, in Mizoram, we are in the least of expensive. If you go to other parts of India, it's so expensive, so huge, it's so lavish. And now Mizoram is also getting more and more lavish and expensive and all that. I know both of you are not married yet, so I just want to know your opinion. Um, see the gown to be worn, it's very costly. The sweets, the cakes, the video shooting, all are about planning. And the excuse we always give here is this. It always says, oh, brother, this is the most important day of our lives, of my life. Why not? 
wearing this, why not wear this, right? I deserved it. I've been working very hard. I've been waiting all my life for these days and all that. So to look, you know, when the culture around us also says they should not see us as somebody that's too corny, meaning too ching, too zatlak, like that, you know, we kind of justify ourselves. And then, so finally we cave in and we, we give extravagantly and all that. But um, the reality is that is it not that a waste and what should be our attitude for all these, right? It happens only once in a lifetime. Always say that. So, Brother Emmanuel, what is your opinion on all this? How would you say and how would you counsel and what should be our attitude towards this extravagant spending? Yes, uh, that's a very good question. And yes, uh, I think this is uh, we are starting to co copy the Western lifestyle, as we say. And during our, uh, when we look at the uh, Mizo culture, um, yes, um, we, they have had marriage, even in our grandfather's, uh, our grandparents' time. And now things are becoming so expensive because uh, yes, the gown, and this is the, I think I should say it's the influence of the Western. And I don't know whether, how, how we should uh, counsel the students or our perspective, because it's very hard to change sometimes. And people are uh, celebrating and saying like, as you said, once in a lifetime thing. So um, for me, um, I think the uh, it's okay to have a simple wedding for me, but our, our perspective will not be same. And maybe, yeah, it's the influence of the society. And I don't know what, whether how to really give counseling because our perspective cannot be uh, all the same. But uh, we need to know the sanctity and the uh, uh, secret of marriage, uh, how God ordained and the, the true, um, the ordination in even the Garden of Eden was not that great, but it was God ordination. So I think we should be clear in this when, and the uh, man leaves uh, the parents and cling to his wife. So God ordained it. And we need to be sure about the, uh, the sanctity of the, uh, the, the marriage, whether it is expensive or whether it is simple. And for me, uh, if it's a uh, simple way, is, it's okay if we can do it in a, not an extravagant way. So that is my perspective. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Emmanuel. Mr. Merlin, you need to add anything there? Okay, uh, Brother, let me just uh, uh, add something uh, regarding that. Um, I agree with uh, both of your opinion. I, I prefer a simple wedding than a very extravagant one, even though it uh, depends on a person's perspective and you know, a person's idea and dream of an you know, their wedding, I, 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 I respect that. But the thing is, I think we need to have a discussion as an, you know, as a, a graduate, more, more of this kind of uh, discussion, because I think we need to set a trend as a graduate, because you, uh, the people that are involved in UESI ministry are, you know, the, the active one are usually the one who are, you know, uh, who are uh, the person who are people are looking up in their own uh, society or in uh, wherever uh, uh, you know they are even in their working place I believe even in their church or uh, society so as a you know as a graduate uh, who is having this kind of you know respect can set a trend can set you know an examples to other uh, people, because we the Mizo are, I think we feel. I feel like we are very easy to influence, uh, you know, as a society, as a community. See, not even uh, before our 
you know, uh, 50 years of uh, gospel, uh, gospel, uh, uh, you know, in our uh, state, the whole of Mizoram is converted into Christianity. So that shows that we are easy to influence. So I believe that uh, as a graduate, as a, a graduate, an influencer uh, who has uh, a respect and who has, uh, you know, uh, who can have uh, more influence in the younger generation, I believe that uh, we need to set an example. So people or our, uh, you know, our uh, young graduate or our young, you will see that even they, they, they can afford to do all those, you know, extravagant and uh, luxurious thing uh, that um, uh, a wedding can have, but they choose to be this simple. They choose to do in this way. So uh, in, especially in Amara society, even, our, oh, our wedding yeah. is very expensive. Wow. <laughs> Even the price of, you know, the uh, price of a girl is very expensive already. And then, and and for the girl size also, because our, you know, because our price is very, uh, exp or very high as compared to other uh, uh, community. See, there is a pressure even from the girls' family that you know we are asking this and that for the girls' price. So at least we have to let her take this much to the boys' family. So we spend a lot, both, both the boy size and the girl size, besides, uh, you know, uh, the usual uh, photo suit and all those things. We already ex uh, spend so much uh, in doing, uh, you know, the rituals and the traditions that we are practicing. So on top of that, we are adding those things. I, I believe it's a very, you know, uh, very hectic, even for our parents and family. So I think as a, uh, I think we are in a position where we can have this kind of influence and uh, where we can have, uh, where we can set a trend. So I'm very, I will be very happy if our, some of our EGF or some of our, you know, graduates uh, can, uh, you know, choose to uh, get married in a simple manner. I will be very happy and I will support them. Yeah. Thank you. For that, thank you for that to happen. I think, EGF to EGF marriage is the best one, right? <laughs> because they have the same philosophy, the same mindset, and they can both convince their parents also. Otherwise, marriage, we're not just marrying two parties. All others are involved, the sisters, the in-laws, the aunts, and everyone is pushing, oh, you got to go for this, got to go for it. And it's, it's difficult, you know, because it's not only us <laughs> making the decision. There are other higher powers <laughs> involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, there was a lot of things that we try to um, squeeze in through the very limited time. I'm sure it's not a very good presentation, but that's what we can do. And uh, uh, I'll hand over the time back to Sister Marilyn. And I think we can request, if possible, Brother Emmanuel to close our prayer, Bible study also later after the prayer, brother, uh, sister. Is that okay? All right, back to you, sister. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Brother Mark, once again for uh, leading us into such a wonderful presentation and uh, thank you brother Emmanuel for sticking with us till the end and as brother uh, Mark have mentioned I request you to please close our uh, mass prayer with uh, you know uh, the closing prayer I will start uh, sharing my screen so if you have any prayer or praise point that you want to add please uh, feel free to um, mention it uh, 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 for the praise point uh, let's praise God for his guidance and protection to each one of us uh, during this pandemic and uh, let's thank God for giving us a wonderful opportunity to have a Bible study and prayer meet and also for a wonderful resource person to brother Mark and praise God for all the members who are present here for the SEGF Bible study uh, brother Emmanuel I think you are a kind of new here in Shaha EGF uh, Bible study uh, we are never much in number. Uh, the active member in Siha EGF are around only six or seven. So we are never much in number, but uh, we tend to focus on the quality of the study that we have. So uh, uh, thank you for sticking with us. And um, praise God for all the bro those brothers and sisters from USI family who recovered from COVID-19 infection. And let's thank and praise God for the improving COVID-19 situation in Siha districts. And let's also pray that God will continue to take complete control of uh, the situation. And 
uh, the prayer points are for all the members of CIEGF uh, who are busy in our own works and lives for God's continuous blessing and protection during this pandemic. And for Brother Zuya, Brother Zuya is our vice pres president uh, and his wife is uh, our secretary, um, Sister Mami, so, uh, and family for God's continuous blessing. And for Brother Sanga and his family for God's continuous blessing and guidance upon them. Brother Sanga is our finance come treasurer and they recently had a, a newborn baby girl. So please continue to remember uh, their family, the whole family in our prayer. And let's pray for Brother Peter. Brother Peter is the ex-coordinator uh, <clears throat> and assistant secretary of CIHF, uh, who is the director of student affairs in their university in Mongolia. Let's pray to God that uh, you know, God will show him the way to have uh, maximum impact among his students. And let's pray for Sister Rod Feli. Uh, she is one of the active, uh, uh, recently added active member of CIEGF, uh, who is very busy touring the southern part of uh, Mizoram due to her work for WHO for gas protection and guidance. And let's also pray for Sister Chazwali, PUCEU committee member and our and her family who are tested positive for COVID-19, for God's healing and grace upon them. And for the ongoing synchronous Bible studies organized by USI Missourium and UNIT Bible studies organized by the EU and the EGF for the presence of the Holy Spirit and God's guidance for all the participants and resource persons. And let's continue to pray for our staff couples and their family during this difficult situation for good health and his protection. Let's pray that God will give them the wisdom and means to continue their ministry and continue to have an impact in the uh, Mizoram USI ministry. And also for our dear brother and sister within our USI ministry and their family who are affected by COVID-19. And uh, please continue to pray for my aunt uh, who is suffering from duodenum cancer and are receiving chemotherapy treatment. She is uh, supposed to get uh, her last cycle of chemotherapy in the upcoming week. Please pray that uh, God will grant her uh, the strength uh, to be able to receive the treatment and come back home safely. And for all our EGF members who are frontline workers in our fight against COVID-19, and let's also pray for the ongoing um, undergrad uh, examination under Missouri University. Pray for the smooth conduct of the examination and for all of our EU members who sit for the, uh, this university exam. And let's also pray for the family member of Brother T.B. Franklin, trustee member of EESI Press Trust. Uh, uh, Press Trust, uh, Brother Mark is also part of this Press Trust. So who went to be with the Lord on 8th November, uh, 2021. Let's continue to pray for his family. And for the theological students that we have in USI family, Brother Mamatea, Brother, Brother Sena, Sister Moi Moi, and Brother Mara, please continue to pray for God's guidance and wisdom in their studies. And Sister Galilee, who is an uh, active member in CIEGF, EGF, she uh, was admitted in LRM Hospital Isol for ghost stone removal last week. Uh, I could not contact her. So I think um, uh, you know, she will be in her recovering um, phase. So let's continue to pray for her. So those are the praise point and the prayer point that I uh, prepared from my side. And if you have any more point that you want to add, Please feel free to do so. I'll give the time. Sir, do we include the students' examination these days? EUs are facing first, third, and fifth semester examination. How have we included here? Yes, yes, brother. We have included uh, okay, okay. Uh, point number uh, point number 12. 12. Oh, okay, okay. Got it. Yeah, thank you. From Lungle EGF side, also Brother Emmanuel might have some points to pray. Yes, yes, Brother, go ahead. If you have Brother. Brother Emmanuel, if you have any prayer point or praise point that you want to add. Oh, uh, my family are uh, having this, uh, are suffering from COVID-19 and I want you to pray for my family, but I'm still negative. And we are now uh, in home isolation. And if you could pray for my family for their recovery.
Okay. So for Brother Emmanuel family who are tested positive for COVID-19 infection for their speedy recovery. And also for Brother Emmanuel who are uh, who is still uh, a negative for God continuous uh, guidance and protection. So those are the praise point and the pray prayer point. I request both of you to uh, please on your mic so that we can have a uh, mass prayer. And at the end of the prayer, I will request Brother Emmanuel to close the mass prayer with prayer. Let's all look to God in prayer. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, God, Lord, uh, we thank you so God, much for our this uh, wonderful once opportunity again, to have uh, so much more regarding us. Oh, God. And leading us to this far. And Lord, you have been guiding us by the mark and the light of the the mark and the light of 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 the light uh, uh, for each one of us uh, uh, during the pandemic thank you and for giving us a wonderful uh, opportunity uh, uh, and uh, for all the members uh, and for the guidance and for the also, uh, we praise you for uh, uh, the, the brothers and sisters uh, 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 thank you and we cover the COVID-19 positive we thank you for the improvement we have I bring that Lord, uh, so much we want to uh, the, uh, pray the for a uh, uh, member of EGF uh, uh, who are uh, the, uh, God's uh, 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 ministry. Uh, and Lord, we pray for the uh, 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 member of Sangai's family for uh, your guidance, for the media, and brother and Peter, and brother Sangai family, and the people who are actively uh, working for your kingdom. kingdom. And, and, and we thank you for, them, for and also for uh, uh, the the ongoing examinations uh, for the semester examination uh, for all and our students who are especially involved that in this. And we also pray for Sister Merlin, who is suffering from cancer. Uh, for the treatment um, and we pray for the frontline workers and pray uh, for Brother T. Franklin and uh, Mama Thea Mormoyi and Brother Mara who are theology students and we pray for Sister Galilee and we also want to pray this time for my family who are suffering from this we also want to pray and we pray uh, for all uh, 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 the, the students so and, so and, and all and so so we Lord, Lord we need your Holy Spirit to guide us and Lord as we study today the holistic balance that we have and Lord that we need and you have bring to us just what we need today, Lord. We also want to pray. Thank you. Lord, we help the coordinator as well. So that as she started going training, for you go well and you will be trained fully. Tonight, our Father, we pray for forgiveness for your brothers and sisters and their family who are affected by this COVID-19 pandemic. We don't know if one of them is clearly or nature is suffering. But you know them all. Ah, you them. Really Tonight, especially Sister Marilyn's aunt, who is suffering from terminal cancer, we have been committing her into your hands uh, Sunday uh, after Sunday. Uh, Sunday. Right now, she's taking um, chemotherapy. We also want to pray with for healers uh, soon. Uh, we pray for frontline worker uh, uh, front front workers, uh, especially graduate members, and we be with them. And we also pray for all the students who are undergoing a examination first, third, and fifth semester students, especially the EU students, may your wisdom, may your guidance be upon them. And this is this required even technology. May we bless the technology they use for the examination that's going on. We ask that your presence and your healing and your uh, comforting hand guidance be upon Brother T.B. Franklin's family. We lost him 
and uh, our press trust also we are one person short and help us so we'll take step forward and we give us this good replacement too we pray for our brother Mamate, brother Sena, sister Momoe, and brother Ma, who are all studying theology in their respective places. Tonight, as we come here, Father, we also uh, pray that uh, you heal brother Emmanuel's family. Brother Emmanuel is here right now in our midst, and I pray that all his um, family members who are tested positive, Father, will get healing from you, you who is the healer of all sickness and disease. May you take them in your hand. May you breathe fresh lesion life. And, and at the same time, we also ask that he be protected by this deadly disease. And may he is an important personnel for the ministry, for the institution. And we ask that this disease will not hamper his work too. And we thank you for his presence. Continue to bless him and guide him. Father, thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity. May you always be glorified in our Bible studies and UESI activities as we learn today, uh, as we've just learned to help us all, uh, that we will be able to sift through the importance and where to place our priorities in our life, our ministry. Thank you so much for enabling us, Father. We ask this prayer in Jesus' precious name. Lord, uh, thank you. Uh, you have been guiding us and Lord uh, today also we could have this uh, uh, wonderful time together with the uh, EGF and the Bible study that has come to us the holistic balance Lord uh, it's just what we need in our life and Lord may you bless whatever has come to us and may we use it for our ministry that we are continuing. And we also pray for all the EGF members or in and around Mizoram. Uh, Lord, guide us, lead us together with one unity and your Holy Spirit that we may in the future uh, together stand uh, for the kingdom. And Lord, guide us, lead us as we uh, continue our days. May you continue to be with us. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Emmanuel. Thank you. Please continue to come back next mm -hmm. week also. Welcome. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. We hope you'll get good results mm -hmm. soon. Your family will keep praying for you. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, both of you. Yeah.